Of course, the quarterfinal set between Legendary and Cloud9 Tempest. For those of you just joining us, these two teams playing for seeding. The winner will take on Frank Fang Gaming tomorrow, and the loser will have to face off with the first place seed Misfits. And yet another best of three, but this is game two. Cloud9 up 1-0. Picks and bans coming out. Our bans coming out very quickly. LeBlanc taken away from Yasui. Kalista banned on the opposite side. Looks like they don't want to give Impactful a chance to play that. Now, Callista was first picked by Cloud9 Tempest last game, which just shows the priority that both of these teams are going to be able to put on it. So Cloud9 Tempest don't want that one being taken away from them now that they're on the red side. But I would be extremely surprised if a Rek'Sai gets through that pick ban phase from either one of these teams. It was almost 100% kill participation from Hard last game, and I think I want to say it was all but one kill. But the Rek'Sai pickup was definitely problematic for Legendary in the early game, whether it was the fact that he was living in their jungle or getting first blood for his mid lane and then counter ganking top lane at the same, uh, relatively soon afterwards. If it doesn't get banned out here by Legendary, I would sure hope that they pick that one up for Dardoch so he has way more impact than that Nunu pick did last game. Yeah, and really didn't see him utilize the Nunu pick too well there. I think they were thrown off by that early lane saw from Cloud9. Cloud9, a more experienced team, more experience with coaching, more chances to practice as a unit, and as a result, their kind of their macro strategies coming very well, coming through for them very well. On the opposite side, though, a lot of strong individual players on this uh, legendary lineup, and it looks like Sivir going to be the first pick here. A K impactful. You said it yourself, you wanted to see an engage tool, and and here it is, on the hunt. That is that is definitely an engage tool from them, but I'm really surprised that the Rek'Sai is going to be potentially allowed to be grabbed up, and more importantly, that Rek'Sai was actually picked up last in the Cloud9 Tempest pick ban phase last time around, so maybe there isn't as much emphasis on it as I thought there was going to be, but it really was a powerful tool in the early game, but yeah, uh, from Legendary side, picking the Sivir, this is their go button. This is what they were lacking last game. This is what I would love to see the Rengar be picked up again, because now the Sivir is going to thrive by giving that on the hunt and the thrill of the hunt well, the double hunt synergy i guess from both of them but uh the ability to just run in and catch somebody out of position and create these chaotic fights rather than trying to get into chaotic fights around objectives like they were trying to do last game with the new new pickup with the rengar coming in from top lane there it didn't necessarily synergize as well as this potentially can and on the opposite side for Cloud9, looks like we're going to see a similar comp from them though a slight variation hard picking up the new new himself maybe eager to kind of Kind of show Dardock how it's done. We'll have to see how that pick works out for him. And then Solo, once again, going to take the Maokai. And, and I've been pretty impressed with Solo as a player overall. You know, we've seen him perform incredibly well on more carry-oriented top laners. And now being willing to shift into a more supportive style to fit with the team needs. We're going to have to see if uh, a similar thing happens for Acadian. Or as you said, are we going to see the thrill of the hunt on the hunt, the double hunt? <laughs> are we going to see another Rengar or maybe something as uh, out there as Yasuo? Is that a pick he's enjoyed in the past? Um, actually, I don't know if we saw Gragas or Sejuani picked or banned in the last game either, which kind of leads you to think like this new new pickup is something they're really going to want to synergize with the team composition. We'll have to see about that. Well, they were hovering over the Rex side for a second. I was getting kind of excited, but the Lulu and the Ziggs coming out from Legendary. So we have a Lulu and a Sivir. If this didn't scream Rengar composition, I don't know what will. They even have the Ziggs to stall out and just wave clear for ages so they can potentially catch somebody out trying to disengage or trying to go back in lane at that point in time. So this is also one of the only mid lane wave clear champions that was left open last game from Bishu, but he wound up not, like the Zareth was banned away. Uh, the Ziggs was banned as well, yeah. in fact, that Bishu was not allowed to play this last game. And like I said, we haven't seen too much from Bishu yet, but you know Cloud9 must have some experience with him as they banned it out, and now it makes it through even the second rotation. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly how they respond here, and I'm wondering if they're going to give Yasui last pick or if they're, uh, they're going to pick something now, now that they can see the counter pick matchup already. Well, if they give you Sui last pick, they'd we end up last picking a support or an AD carry uh, if they didn't. So not surprising to see that they pick up the Alistar and the Jinx combination here, just in case there's some sort of lane swappy shenanigans or something going on. But this does, of course, hide their mid lane pickup for last as well. The Alistar, the Maokai, the Nunu, really, really, really beefy front line. And a Jinx kind of sitting in the back and just dishing out large amounts of damage behind a very beefy front line is kind of where you want them to be. This also screams 
tower pushing to me because you have the new new blood boil on top of the jinx who has her own attack speed bonus and is already known as a kind of tower destruction monster now you're giving her a blood boil on top of that one Kondine tempest might be looking to rotate around the map and take out a lot of towers early but it's gonna have to be really really early for that uh the zigs really comes online once you get like an athene's on holy grail or like maybe even one extra item on the zigs the wave clear and a, even just a blue buff actually the wave clear really kind of comes into play and it's going to be really really hard to siege down on that composition and of course this is kind of cloud nine showing that they have a little bit more flexibility in their style do you think we're going to see mm -hmm. excuse me do you think we're going to see something more supportive here coming in for yasui or is he going to play another damage threat like Cassiopeia? What, what, what are his options here as we see uh, Rek'Sai and Nautilus locked in on the side for Legendary? A later game... Well, now they've, they've locked in the Azir. So I was going to say, a later game champion that can also kind of counter siege or just deal a lot of poke damage would be very, very powerful. The Xerath is something that came to mind, but the Azir kind of does the exact same thing. We saw that Bishu kind of wanted to do the same thing in last game's composition, but it didn't necessarily work out. And once again, now we see a two-pronged carry threat with the new new Blood Boil. You put it on the Azir, it's going to work great with the Sand Soldiers. You put it on the Jinx, it's going to go great because she's an AD carry and she likes auto-attacking things. So both of those pickups from Cloud9 Tempest are going to synergize well with the new new blood boil and it also does a lot of damage to towers you want it using the sand soldier on a tower it chunks it down for a set amount of damage so we see cloud nine tempest it screams aoe towers like tower sieging like you're not going to want to really jump on a team that has a new new of the absolute zero and a ventral maelstrom with an alistar to kind of headbutt away your engagement tool but i really do like the adaptation coming in from legendary as well they pick something up that's going to have a lot of wave clear so they can stall out game if they need to and actually acadian going to this Lulu pick up here, it's really going to be more about like the team kind of oriented fights with the more supportive style coming out from the Lulu top lane, as opposed to kind of like, let's put all our eggs in the engage Acadian basket. Well, it looks like they've got a pretty strong team. Definitely two very different compositions. It'll be interesting to see when and where they decide to pick their fights. Of course, impactful on the Sivir. You know, not something we've seen too much from before. Definitely prefers those picks like Lucian, those more uh, early game carry oriented picks. But obviously they have an absurd amount of mobility. And uh, Alistair, once again, making an appearance this time in the hands of Sheep and Law Pally, finally busting out this Nautilus, a pick that um, we didn't see as much. Or we haven't seen yet in these two games. So I was surprised not to see it picked before. Now it's getting picked up. And a lot of aggression going to come out from these picks on the side of Legendary. But two minutes left on the spectator delay. What What's your lane to watch here? I really have to say the lane to watch is actually it's not really even a lane. I want to see what the lane swap situation is. Legendary had a really difficult time adapting to the lane swap in game number one. And even though they did send Kadian to kind of do the double jungle and he hit level two, whereas Solo was still level one when they swapped lanes back, they weren't able to get the pick that they waited for in bottom lane. And they kind of slowly but surely lost advantage. They even gave up a kill to Lod in a 1v1 80 carry versus top laner situation because of the level advantages that Lod had in that one. So I'm really looking to see how the duo lanes play out, I guess. If there's a lane swap, does Legendary react better to it? And if not, is that what wins Cloud9 Tempest the game? Then we'll have to see a minute and 30 seconds left on this spectator delay. And of course, head on over to wellplay.org slash giveaway. If you're already following uh, Razor or Alpha Draft on Twitter, that's two entries already. Check them out on Facebook. You got yourself a neat four. A whole set of peripherals going to be given away, but we'll be back with Game 2 between Legendary and Cloud9 in the Alpha Draft Challenger League in just a minute.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second game of the night for the Alpha Draft Challenger League. It's the corner final matches between Legendary on your blue side and Cloud9 Tempest up a game on the red. Starting up for Legendary this game has Sui takes a lot of damage here. It's going to be Acadian in that top lane, Lulu. Dardock now with his hands on that Rek'Sai pick. Bishu in the mid lane on this Ziggs. Impactful and Law Pally in the bot lane. Sivir and Nautilus at their disposal. We'll have to see. I was, I was a little bit distracted by the dancing that was going on in the mid lane and the fact that they just kind of fed each other a ward kill over there. So Yasui <laughs> going to be starting off a little bit more gold in here. And actually, uh, even though both of these teams are just kind of lining up at the line of scrimmage on the river, both of them are just kind of fighting against each other and jockeying for position and really hard pressed to put those wards down in the jungle to really kind of scout out where their opponents are going to be last game we mentioned that cloud nine tempest when they're playing against the nunu wanted to put deep wards down at the enemy jungle to try to scout out where the nunu was going to be so they knew if he was going to be going for an invade on their own buffs or not and they wound up trading red buffs so no surprise to see both teams kind of doing the same thing this time around solo on maokai actually going to be getting sapling toss first so he's going to wind up stacking those up tvk to early level two but like i said the lane slot situation was really what i was going to be looking for nobody has really kind of seen to snip this one out and it looks like it is going to be a 2v1 situation but acadian's waiting in top lane and oh i thought he was going to try to get some surprise burst damage on live but he just backed away gonna be a tough lane for him to farm comfortably of course will he be able to trade with wad here in these first couple of levels but has to be careful with sheep shows his face now the 2v1 and once again cloud nine wants to shut down acadian and kind of deny law poly as well and very easy for them to do so surprising that legendary didn't necessarily adapt to this one we'll have to see uh wh what impactful can do with this extra experience damage and in the mid lane already a lot of trading if you should take a pretty substantial chunk out of yasui's health bar there yeah, so both these mid laners will have to see if this matchup pans out any differently. Last time around, it was Cassiopeia versus the Azir, and it was Yasui on Cassio that hit that uh, BS late game damage just a little bit earlier than Bishu was going to be able to do anything about it. And we also saw, of course, Hard providing some early ganks on the Bishu, picking up first blood in mid lane. This time around, Bishu's got the Rex side, and like I said, that's going to be a little bit of an interesting kind of choice. Uh, for Legendary. Are they going to use the Rek'Sai aggressively and get some early pressure down for their solo lanes that fell behind last game? Or is it just going to be more about controlling the jungle like we saw Hard doing last time with the pick? Have to see indeed. Does look like some attention being paid over here to the Scuttle Crab as Sivir can just push this wave into the tower. Maokai finally headed down. Up a little bit of CS. Only one actually at this point as they now tie up. Acadian Able to farm at least somewhat safely on this Lulu pick. A lot more safely than that Rangar early game. So it should do just fine. But a little bit of uh, aggression here. As Impactful pushes this wave in. A surprising decision. Could be in trouble though. Sheep on the back side. They may try to find the dive. This is pretty questionable here. Sheep may go in anyway. Gonna get the knock up. Gonna get ignited. But we'll make it out hard already. First blood though taking place in the mid lane. Vod getting locked down. Trying to find his way out with the heal. Hard trying to find the kill on Acadian. Will grab one for himself. So a one for one exchange. We wanted jungle action. And they gave it to us. Dardock not eat or stop yet. yet. Law Pally trying to find his way in. The Chompers being used up. Lod with absolutely no mana, but four members are here. Dardock gonna get the knockup onto two, but could be in trouble. Sheep knocking him down, and now another kill in the favor of Cloud9. Trading back and forth, but Dardock staying a little bit too long. Yeah, I was thinking that that dive from Cloud9 Tempest was a little bit questionable up there. They took a lot of damage on their tower, but Hard took no damage, was able to chase down back towards the second tier tower and pick up the kill on Acadian. And then Lod had such a good bait. No mana, low health, pretended he didn't have flash and had to flash right from the tower, but he just goes over the wall and baits that in. Perfectly played by Cloud9 Tempest. Now it's a big really out of that one, but Cloud9 is not done yet. The Blood Boil down on the Lod. They may find another option to get in here hard gonna have to pack off and uh, yet yeah, last game i thought was aggressive but that game was calm by comparison as we see constant pressure put on each and every one of these lanes a special focus on this top side of the map yeah and i thought legendary really kind of had the edge by sending their support to go up into that top lane and support the lulu before the minions reach the tower but cloud and tempest has had another plan in mind they wound up going with the three slash four man dive as solo even came around with a teleport to continue that engagement and even though they wound up picking up first blood in the mid lane uh against yasui yasui doesn't seem to be all that deterred he's just poking down bishu right there utilizing the sense over so aggressively in this mid lane matchup 
And you can see this is a huge difference between the previous matchup. Darduck, though, trying to find an engage. So he could be taken down here. He can't make it out. Stan Soldier is going to knock Darduck up. An aggressive play. The heal coming out, but he stays too long. The Ignite able to pick that one up. Darduck getting taken down. And a masterful display from Yasui. No flash on Azir. And... Dardock coming in, thinking that Azir is just going to fear for his life, but instead of dashing away, he dashes in and gets the knockup in tower range. The extra shots come down. Like you said, even though Bishu was a little bit far away, just farming minions at that point, couldn't really come over the wall to get support, uses the heal, but the ignite cuts it in half and just takes him down. Really, really great play by Yasui. Now he's got a level advantage too already with the Emperor's Divide. Zig's not yet level 6. And just a beautiful... Beautiful display of confidence coming in from Yasui. Most mid laners may have, you know, hesitated to go in there. I thought for sure he was just, oh, he'll just leave. He'll just leave this fight and he'll be fine. Like, no big deal. But no, turns it on Dardock. Dardock caught out, locked down, and taken out is now Yasui up 1 0. And it's not a massive lead at this point, but it's a huge showing of confidence. And it's got to shake Dardock there. He's going to have to rethink his approaches into this lane. Yeah, we, like we said, the Rek'Sai pickup was going to be a bit more of an aggressive jungle pickup, but after getting first blood in mid lane, he wound up dying trying to counter gank top lane. Let's see if it winds up working Dardoch out here. finds his way out. in. Lod could go down. He will go down. I said Dardock may not have the confidence. Looks like he's not even remotely shaken. Moves his way into top. Another quick pickup for Legendary. Yeah, and I really like that from Dardock. Even though, like I said, he wound up giving away two kills after picking up first blood, he's not going to stop aggressively ganking early with this Rek'Sai because the worst thing that happens is Nunu is there or maybe he walks into a support and there's not necessarily a lot of damage that coming out from that. So even though he has gone a little bit too deep once or twice and that's resulted in his deaths, he hasn't necessarily, you know, died because there was too much damage or a counter gank went awry. Although because he shows top lane, that's signal for a free dragon here from Cloud Down Tempest. They have the Nunu, the Consume Smite combination that goes down easy and they got the first one of the game for themselves that may not pay off too much right now but with the scaling pick like this is here like this jinx you have to know that it's going to be pretty important as they move later and later into the game already hard on this new new jungle showing a pretty confident display acadian could be in trouble though does have the ultimate available but may not be enough is using it if you too little too late though as he is going to go down and acadian barely making it out whimsy gonna save his life and it's just so close to zap the zap. The minion. Hero minion there. Kaden, I thought he was going to pay for being out a little bit too far. Had to flash up in just a couple seconds. So he thought he was going to be safe. No wards in the river, though. So the Alistar was able to come in. But that was just... It was lucky. I'm going to say it was, it was lucky that he got away with barely any help in that engagement. He probably should have gone down there, but now he's going to have the teleport available to come back and defend against this tower. And that was something that Lod really needed because even though he's picked up a couple of assists, he's so far behind in CS because of all the constant action and all the attention being paid in the top lane. And oh, that's right, right now in the top lane. Looks like he may be back for a little bit of revenge. Of course, no Lulu ultimate available, but he's going to be able to unburrow right on top of Lod. Lod trying to find his way out because has used heal. Skirmish and Saber as well. Dardock with a previous tunnel making his way back in and grabbing a kill. Could be in trouble here. Solo there as well. Yet another tunnel escape. May not be enough though. Lulu just running for his life. Acadian going to make it out of that one. Dardock will trade his life though. It looks like his top lane turret as well. It's both Alistair and Nunu push in for this one. Acadian scared to go in on that. Yeah, but at the same exact time, look at bottom lane. Legendary is responding by they took the tier one tower in that fight, and now they're just pressing down onto the tier two. Solo teleported up to that top lane, so there's no pressure to push them back against it. They're not going to be able to take it down, but they've got it to 825 HP. So in the grand scheme of things, the kill for a kill and a tower for a tower, but all that bottom lane pressure in favor of Legendary now, and with how aggressive this Rek'Sai has been, that opens up gank paths for that mid lane, where you're seeing the blue buff right now has been bullying around Zix. See exactly what they do here, Bishu, as you said, getting slowly and surely bullied out of this lane. Dardoch may try to find his own blue buff back. Has to be careful though, this might not gonna be enough. Hard a little bit quicker on the trigger there. More appropriate timing, but he is going to get knocked up. Looks like Kaden going to back out, though. Absolute zero use. Darduck will get caught in it. Not going to do too much there as he manages to make his way out. And Legendary, a much better showing from them this game, honestly. They actually have a gold lead. They're looking a lot more confident in their play. And this looks like the difference between Darduck on Rek'Sai and Darduck on Nunu. I didn't say the gold lead right now is all the difference between Sivir and Jinx. The play style from Dardock on Rek'Sai and the 
play style from Dardock on Nunu is like night and day. But the reason that Legendary looking so good in this one is because Impactful has just had a free lane to farm this entire time. Now that they put so much pressure on the bottom side of the map and Maokai Solo has frozen that lane, they are moving up to the top lane and sending that most powerful most powerful pick on the map, I'm going to say right now, in that Sivir to push down yet another outer tower. So it's going to be two towers compared to one very quickly up here as that Sivir chunking down the tower top lane already half HP. Very quickly approaching that Infinity Edge, a massive power spike, and we haven't even seen on the hunt used yet. And I just think this is exactly what the lineup is supposed to do. Yasui trying to find his way in. Getting locked down. Depth charge used as well. Sheep with the disengage is going to flash his way out of that super mega bomb. I can <laughs> super mega bomb out of Ziggs' ultimate. Super mega, mega inferno, inferno bomb. bomb death rocket. Yeah. You got both in this game. <laughs> yeah. He's so tough. Well, looks like just a lot of aggression here. Hard could be caught out. Dardock getting knocked up. Dardock knocking up there. Hard finding his way out. Gonna use the quick consume to escape that one. That raptor. And Such a bro. Yeah. Came, came to the rescue. Was like, I, I got you. Don't worry. I'll give my life so you can live. They are going to lose their red buff for that, though. So small advantages once again going in favor of Legendary. And like you said, they have a minor gold lead at this point in time. And we'll have to see if Sivir's going to wind up be getting that Infinity Edge sometime soon. Doesn't quite look like it. Has gone back to pick up the, the Berserker's Grief instead. Mid lane, middle tower is the only one left standing. And I really want to see when Legendary decide to make a move on that one. Dragon's also going to be up in about a minute. They have to know that this one was taken when hard gained top lane last time around. They might have, they, they had to have seen the buff actually going down. So they know about when this timer is going to come up. They have some pink ward control on this river. So we'll have to see where they go and when they move to contest it. I guess on hard. The flash not bringing him in. The dredge line so strong. Hard trying to find his way out. Challenging Smite and a quick pop of the absolute zero. The dot is ticking. May find a way out yet. Law Pally waiting for the hook. Sheep eager to disengage their dredge line. Available soon. The Chompers disengaging and once again hard. Making it out with a sliver of life. The Prey Seeker not going to find home as Dardock walks away once again empty handed. Yeah, Hard uh, just does not like dying, I guess. Last game is Rek'Sai, he didn't wind up dying, and now this Nunu pick he hasn't died on either, but in comes Yasui. Looks like Law Pally is going to be taking the turret though, so not too much loss as they turn this one around. That is going to be the Super Mega Death Rocket, and it will find a kill. The Mega Inferno Bomb on the backside doing a lot of damage. Watch could be in trouble. Going to get. Out of there, Flame Chomper paying off. Dividends on the hunt used as well. B2, though, trading his life for that one. Too much aggression on the side of Legendary. And despite their confidence, it looks like it will turn against them. A two for one exchange. Yasui going down. They will not find this mid lane turret. And that was just a little bit of disorganized chaos in that mid lane here. Cloud Knight and Tempest went to defend against that tower because Legendary had the rotational play, but every member kind of trickled in at some different point in time. Like we saw Yasumi flashing in, or not even flashing in, but just coming in over the wall, putting down the Emperor's Divide before the rest of his team had got there. Had Maokai been there at the same time, they might have had a better cleanup, but at the same time, Legendary kind of had a member trickling in after three of them were sieging down. But the most important thing is going to be this dragon that both of these teams were start basically started fighting over the vision control for Cloud9 and Tempest they might actually be able to get this one right now Lal Poly is the only one around the area Hard is there with the consume smite combo looks like they are a little bit afraid of the Rek'Sai farm alarm but that is going to be Dardock coming in now to try to contest this mid lane looks like they're just zoning away Yasui right now Death charge being used oh. as well they are not going to get that one as Hard manages to smite that one away yet again a lot of cooldowns burned on the mid lane as well Dardock trying to move in here has to back off though help picks Stopping a lot of that damage, but it looks like Law Pally may try to find an engage from the side. Law, no longer scared, pushes in here, has yet to finish the Infinity Edge, but still doing a distant chunk of damage. Sivir able to pick up that mid lane turret, and it's absolute chaos. But it does look like it's going to favor Legendary, as they are going to be able to pick up this blue buff as well as that mid lane turret. Giving that one on over to Bishu. Hard just makes these things look easy. I don't think he's lost a smite battle or a consume versus smite battle yet in this game. He's stolen away boss, he's stolen away raptors, and he made sure to secure the dragon on that circumstance too. But after that little bit of a tussle by the dragon pit, Cloud9 Tempest do have to disengage. They are way more powerful, as we said before. If they trickle in, they wind up dying. If they stay together and fight as like a two to five man team, then they're going to be a little bit more powerful. But Legendary on with the, on the hunt. Burn, now Kai on the top side taking a tower. He does have teleport. He could be coming in. It looks like Lob Pally tanking so much damage. Will go down though. Jinx on the backside, flashing out of that ultimate. 
gonna be safe. Yasui eager to find something back, but they're still just trading back and forth on these turrets. Overall, though, a pretty substantial lead in favor of Legendary and Maokai. Doesn't even teleport to the fight. More than content to pick up that turret for himself. And while Cloud9 and Tempest has been getting small advantages across the map, one of the things they haven't been able to equate with equal ad advantage is the fact that the Sivir is massive right now, hasn't even picked up an Infinity Edge, and we were seeing them take a tier 2 bottom tower and threaten to dive on an inhibitor tower at 15 and a half minutes into this game. Nobody has completed a really big item yet. Athenes and Holy Grail is the biggest item on the map right now, besides maybe the, the ever favorite Cinderholt coming out from both of these junglers. But this is just so quick and so aggressive coming out from Legendary. They're not letting Cloud9 Tempest kind of set up their game plan like they did last time around. They punished them harder for the lane swap. They didn't let Lod sit there and stay safe. And even though C9T put so much of their resources into that top lane, trying to give Lod a safe lane, trying to get him knocked down the tower first, Legendary prevented them from doing that, and in doing so, they have the superior AD carry this time around, and they have that go button that they were looking for that they were missing from last game. And you talked about how crucial that can be, and we saw how effective and how lethal this team comp can be when on the hunt is used. Of course, uh, Sivir has now finished that Infinity Edge, as well as picked up a few more items. Jinx now has the goal to finish it herself, but won't be able to finish up those Berserker's Reeves or buy any other pieces. Just barely able to keep up with this itemization right now. We'll have to see how it affects them in the coming fights. And uh, Bishu and friends looking a lot more comfortable this game. A lot more reliant on those comfort picks like the Ziggs. But having a lot bigger impact, you can see Bishu. He's only 0-1-3, and three, but farming up well, keeping up. We'll have to see how well he does once he finishes what I can only assume is going to be a Luden's Echo. Yeah, and... Once again, this is kind of like the underdog story. Legendary came into this one. Like we said, they're not the favorites. So they're not expected to win. Cloud9 Tempest, judging by the... Even though it's the challenger scene, it's a little weird to hear you say the term seasoned veterans. They are the more experienced players in this circumstance. And the fact of the matter is that after game number one, when they executed that lane swap, Legendary has adapted to that. They, like you said, some of it's these comfort picks and some of it is a little adaptation of what their composition is supposed to do. They get a bit more aggressive, they play a little bit more skirmishy, and now they found themselves at this advantage. But are they going to be able to take it one step further? Cloud9 Tempest has been behind for a majority of this game, but they still have two dragons compared to zero. Now, on the here on Legendary, you gotta try to convert this wave clear and this aggression into siege and tower diving at smart and key points in time. You have to wait for those level 11 power spikes, those level 2 ultimates, and strike before Cloud9 Tempest can get them. If you just allow them to defend up in this mid lane here with the Azir and Jinx wave clearing away, it's gonna be really difficult when you don't have that dragon buff power on, the si on your side, so we'll have to see if they can make the most of this mid lane push. Both teams poised for an engage here. We'll have to see if they can find a way in. Kind of backing off here as they let Lulu, Acadian, pick up some farm for himself on the top side. And and you mentioned it yourself, you know, Cloud9, definitely the more seasoned veterans here as far as the team goes. Uh, a lot more experience working together. So the fact that this relatively young lineup, this relatively young team, Legendary, is actually ahead of them right now by a pretty significant margin speaks uh, greatly of the potential strength of this lineup, of how strong they can be once they've had a little bit more time to get together and how powerful it is when they play their own game as we see them now move on to the top side and pressure in this turret. Yeah, I really like the movement that's going on now. They're shoving up a wave and then moving and going for another lane where the minions have actually started to crash into the tower. I wouldn't be surprised if they head back to mid lane and try to do it on bottom side again if they don't get in this fight here. And jumpers finding one. We haven't seen an engage yet. Twisted advance used. Both teams could look to find something. We'll have to see sheep hanging out along the front side. They look for a headbutt pulverize. And Yasui waiting in the wings. May look for a flank. Looks like both teams are just going to back off. And uh, a brief moment of calm. And this could... Well, this is something that we've seen Legendary struggle with in the past, is breaking these inner line of turrets. Breaking these tier twos. And while they got that early one, we'll have to see if they can get any more um, could be tough to do for this relatively young lineup. Well, one of the big things now is that third dragon is going to be on the map, and if Cloud9 Tempest secure that, that's a pretty big one for them because that's the move speed bonus. That's going to let them match the rotational play coming out from Legendary. It's going to let them move around and start getting these lanes pushing in their favor and then meet up to defend the lanes that still have those outer towers. You need to see here, can Legendary get this dragon and then apply pressure? They've moved in, Pushed out the mid lane just a little bit, and they already had that bottom lane pushing. Lod is not with the team right now. He's sitting there and clearing out the minions that are threatening to push down onto an inhibitor tower. 
if there is a time for Legendary to take this dragon, it's going to be now. Bishu playing zone control. I love what they're doing right here. They got into the pit. They're going to get this one down. Let's see if... I don't even think they're going to need to fight this one. They're just going to take that and move right back to mid lane and start sieging on that tower. Really good map awareness coming out. On the hunt going to be used, though. Depth charge going in as well. I'm seeing this is more than just a pick and a team fight. His Mega Inferno Bomb goes on the backside. Keep trying to find the mitigation. Do it coming over the wall, though. The Azir second he pushes that many people forward, but could have made the wrong choice. He gets locked in the back line. No one on the side of Cloud9 ready to respond to that. And a massive misstep coming in from Yasui. will turn that Dardock. Hungry for more, though, is going to get the knock up on the solo. Bishop coming in for the extra damage. Going to have to flash out of that one. Talked about a team that might struggle to break tier two towers. It looks like they've been given one for free and a massive misstep from Yasui. And like I said, they didn't necessarily have to look for a fight, but if you get a pit like that right in your face, there's no reason not to try to take it. Cloud9 Tempest saw the fact that the pick didn't kill somebody right away, and they were like, we can turn this around, we can re-engage. Yasui comes in over the wall, gets a really great Emperor's Divide, but because of the movement on the map and the way that the game has been playing out, everybody still had summoner spells. As soon as that Emperor's Divide was used, we saw the carries flashing back over the wall, and all of a sudden, it was a, a 1v5 where Yasui was trapped between an enemy team and his own wall of soldiers, and it just did not work out for C9T. So really good response there from Legendary, being able to just melt down onto the Azir and take up that kill and then push out that mid lane tower. C19, though, they're going to try to rush on this Baron as quickly as possible. They have the Nunu, so this could go down pretty quickly, but are they going to be able to escape a fight? It's like Dardock trying to find the knock of Watson to see who can get the Baron. It looks like Nunu is going to secure that one. The first Baron going over to Cloud9. Lot on the back side. Getting taken down by Law Pally. The Boomerang Blade not going to find purchase. Beach is trying to do the damage. Law getting taken down. Hard could be in trouble as well. But Yasui sitting on that back line. Letting those soldiers do the damage. Dardock though going to knock him up as best he can. The Super Mega and the Bomb just bringing him down there. I can't say it for the life of me. But a beautiful fight from the side of Legendary, an excellent show of confidence to engage there. And the best part about that fight, if you're Cloud9 Tempest, was you pretty much had everything that you wanted in that fight. You, not only did you get the Baron, you had your AD carry stuck behind your front line, and your Azir was over the wall commanding his soldiers and putting out massive amounts of damage. But the problem is, they were down in gold. It's a 4,000 gold advantage in favor of Legendary at this point in time. The AD carry got melted in the pit, and after the AD carry was gone, they jumped over the wall and between the burst damage from the Ziggs Mega Inferno Bomb and Dardock going over the wall to lock up Yasui not in time to take that damage, they were just able to blow up the carries from the side of C9T, and then it kind of devolved from that point. Cloud9 Tempest, they had the engagement. I think they had the fight that they were looking for, but they didn't have the itemization to wind up picking up kills quick enough. Now Cloud9, of course, has this late game scaling composition, and we've seen them perform incredibly well even at a deficit but they can't afford to keep making mistakes despite getting the baron and it recouping some of this gold loss they're still at a 4k deficit and this is the power of this legendary lineup when they play their own game as we see them now kind of moving out creating vision playing a little bit patience but still a massive lead and after game one this is not the game to expect i expected legendary really showing up here yeah and like i said the mental fortitude they have just to adapt to the lane swap situation and even when there was so much invested from c19 in that top lane there was a three-man tower dive at level one slash two uh to try to put a kdm behind it worked and then there was a teleport up there to turn it into a four-man situation to pick up yet another kill on darda but that didn't stop legendary for when they knew that they picked aggressive picks and they knew that they can pick up kills and gank so dardot kept ganking and kept trying to get his lanes ahead that needed to be put ahead so and it worked out for the issue wound up getting ahead and more importantly impactful had been given a free lane early on so now he's got an infinity edge phantom dancer vampiric scepter and those berserkers grease 216 cs the most in the game at this point he hasn't died yet so there's so much damage coming out from this server that like we said many many times was kind of the missing piece to what seen what uh, legendary wanted to do last game it's their go button it's a powerful damage source right now and it's helping them win this game as long as it doesn't die there and this is kind of the story of the game so far since we've seen that baron go down as a lot of engages nothing quite yet finding purchase as we saw Maokai uses this advance to engage earlier, Law Pali using that depth charge, and then Yasui there as well, trying to find an engage. Neither team having the backup they need or the necessary situation to re-engage. We'll have to see here though as they push in. Both teams poised for something. Both teams looking incredibly strong. The Luden's Echo finished from Ziggs. The static ship on the opposite side for Jinx and Solto taking a lot of poke here. Could be in trouble. 
Yep. He won't make it out of that one. And this is what happens when you have a wave clearing mid laner that gets an advantage. He turns into a sieging mid laner. So Bishu continuously throwing out these bombs now with that loot and Zeku completed. Like we said, when Zids gets the fiends and then one extra item, he becomes a siege champion instead of just a wave clear champion. The blue buff as well. And it looks like he's going to get a refresh by taking away the one from Cloud9 Tempest. Dragon's going to be up in about 45 seconds. The lanes are pushing towards C9T's base. Right now, things are looking great for Legendary, but Cod9 Tempest, they still have a window of opportunity. If they're able to catch this third dragon, if they're able to get a favorable fight, pushing them into the pit using the Emperor's Divide and hitting them with an absolute zero is going to be crucial. If LOD can stay alive, he now has two powerful items for a Jinx. That's going to be able to dish out a lot of damage. So if you're Legendary, you need to keep pushing these lanes out. You need to keep taking those favorable engages and not getting into the straight up 5v5 team fights. It worked for them last dragon fight. Let's see if they can make something happen. Going in on a solo here. They are going to lock him down with those tags as well as, well as the knockup. But Dardock may have stayed a little bit too long if he's getting taken down. You see we doing so much damage. Super Mega Death Rocket on the back side. Solo in the back line. Hard channeling the absolute zero. He will find at least one. Bishu locked up as well. Flashing out but Solo giving his life for that. Akkadian dropping as well as Lod and Yasui finally free to deal damage from the back lines. They're able to tear through the tankier members of this legendary lineup and turn their sights towards Dragon. So Cloud9 Tempest got the fight that they are looking for. It was a full-on 5v5 and more importantly it was engaged upon by the team that has been poking them down rather than going for a straight up engagement. So Cloud9 Tempest, that was the fight they thrive in. That was what we were just saying that Legendary wanted to avoid. And they engaged it themselves. Dardock maybe being a little bit too aggressive with his Rek'Sai. He engages down on one of the tanks. And Solo at this point in time with the Righteous Glory hasn't really completed a secondary tank item, but has armor and magic resistance. So he's able to sit through the Vengeful Maelstrom and zone away the carries from the side of Legendary. They're peeling backwards. The tanks are going forwards. And C9 T with their carries left untouched or just safe at that point in time. We're able to dish out the damage and take that fight. And this is kind of the power of this lineup. They have the new, they have the blood boil, the Jinx and the Azir to take full advantage of that. Seeing them start to use it now as these carries start to scale up. Jinx still in two items, has finished the Bilgewater Cutlass, so on the way to the Blade of the Rune King and obviously for Yasui as well. The Death Cap and the Unholy Grail. It looks like he's working on that Void Staff as well, so slowly and steadily gaining power. We talked about how strong this lane or this team would be in the late game. Now there's a lot of pressure on Legendary as the goals are starting to even out. Only about a 3k lead in their favor. They gotta make some plays here before they get outscaled. Yeah, and that's one of the things you have to kind of keep in mind. The BS late game is your damage and the BS late game Jinx damage are things you have to be afraid of if you're on the side of Legendary. Yeah, you have the Ziggs to wave clear and siege. You do have the Saber to really force and engage it if you want to go for that. But they've been thriving so much by picking off a member and then getting into a poke war, poking people down and then catching the member that's been hit by too many, one too many Zig bombs or one too many ricochets coming out from Saber. You need to kind of get yourselves in those favorable engagements. If you wind up going into a full on 5v5 brawl, it's going to end like the other one did. If the Emperor's Divide goes off to protect the carries, if Jinx is able to get a, get excited off of one reset in a fight, they're going to tear through some of the squishier members on the side of Legendary. And now it's Cloud9 Tempest. After that fight, the momentum's in their favor. We see Legendary not necessarily as coordinated as they were for the first 25 minutes of this game. They are waiting until Bishu gets his blue buff, and now with that on, we'll see if the Siege and the Poke War starts again. We'll have to see exactly what they can do. Bishu, of course, formerly a member of this Cloud9 lineup, should know. At least kind of how this organization functions as far as team structure goes. May have deeper insight into their strategies. Could, in theory, use that to advantage. Obviously, it's been a long time, so maybe a bit of a stretch. But they need to find some kind of advantage. And obviously, it looks like uh, they're struggling as we approach this mid-game. They're clearing out their own jungle. Clearing out some Baron Vision as well. But so much more confidence from Cloud9 here. Yusui stepping so far forward, but doing so much damage as well. One of the things, if you are on Legendary, I'm a little concerned about is the fact that you don't necessarily have a dedicated tank. Yes, you have a Cinderhulk Rek'Sai, who is now just itemizing for a random Wind's Omen, but the fact of the matter is, 
a Void Staff on the Azir is going to rip through the Locket of the Iron Solari Magic Resistance that you've picked up for your team. There's a double Athenes on Holy Grail, so they're not necessarily as worried about maybe Yasui packing a punch, but there's no armor coming out yet, and LOD hasn't even had to go for a last whisper because of this. He's gone straight towards a Blade of the Rune King, which is going to give massive amounts of percentage HP damage on the Cinder Hulk Rek'Sai, which is going to be stacking HP and multiplying that value and thus for taking more damage. The Nautilus support, who is tanky, has a lot of HP from this Righteous Glory, but doesn't necessarily have any armor to back it up. Even the Lulu ultimate, the Wild Growth, just being able to give someone a straight HP bonus, Jinx is going to be dealing a lot of damage to that. So like I said, these 5v5 engagements, Cloud9 Tempest still has a window of opportunity to take one of those fights and turn it around. Cloud9 looking pretty confident as they move forward. Bishu and the rest of Legendary stepping up to the top side. This is going to be the battleground if they try to fight here. Yasui using those soldiers to spot out that ward. The temporary turret going to drop down in the mid lane. Baron, of course, still on the table. Dragon up in about two minutes now. So they're going to back off. And Dragon going to be a pretty substantial point of contestion. We have Legendary. Can't really afford to give up 4th Dragon. Of course, 4th Dragon, not the most crucial. But getting closer to 5th Dragon, giving C9 that... Functionally, just uh, the free win condition that is Fifth Dragon is incredibly dangerous. Bonus damage to Manches and Minions doesn't sound like the biggest thing in the world, but it will help against this weed clear coming out from Ziggs. Being able to clear out his minions as quick as he's clearing out yours. And the re-engage coming in as Solo tries to find the fight. Right before he used earlier on the hunt, used as well. Solo tanking for no one as Dardock and Law Pally are fighting. Finally, Law Pally will go down. Dardock will drop as well. And there's so point. much damage coming in from Yasui. Impactful. Not gonna drop himself, will take out Yasui. Akkadian could be in trouble. The Jinx is still up, Wad's still available to do damage, but they have to be careful as Bishu and Akkadian, these dual AP threats, are so eager to find one more. A two for two exchange. Cloud9 Tempest kited into the area by the river by Dra uh, Baron Pit there, and that was so good because they forced a localized fight where the AoE ultimates and the Empress Divide could be used. But Legendary were backing away as soon as they realized that there was going to be a losing fight. We saw Azir flashing forward using the Empress Divide, hoping to pick up a kill on Sivir and Impactful, barely surviving through that one. I believe the Rune King definitely helped out there. If Yasui had not flashed forward and just used that Emperor's Divide as the disengage, Cloud9 Tempest might have been able to take a two for one trade in their favor and then force the issue, but still it's not a bad fight for them. Not only did they wind up going even with the team that is ahead of them, but more importantly, all the carries are still going to be up. Right now they have the, their sight stones alive to get control of this dragon area to get that fourth dragon for themselves. Of course, now Sivir able to finish up that last Whisper as well means that Solo may find it a little bit tougher to survive in that last fight. You saw him taking so much damage, and this looks like a repeat of last game, but reversed as now we see an immense amount of confidence from Legendary as they move for this Baron. Yasui yep. and the rest of his team on the way. We haven't seen Hard miss a smite yet, and he is hungry and headed into the pit. Who is going to get this? It's dropping lower and lower. 2k health and health coming in. Hard not going to find it. Gar not going to secure that one for his team. Cloud9. Trying to find the fight. Bishu getting knocked back into the squad. Gonna get taken down in an instant. Cloud9 turning this engage on its head. It's two members or a member drops in an instant and they manage to leave with their lives, but they back out. They don't have the confidence to engage here. And that means four members left up for Legendary. With that Baron buff, Cloud9 headed to fourth dragon. I like the thought process from Legendary. If you want to get that fourth dragon, we're going to make you come to us at Baron. But unfortunately, they took a little bit too much damage. And actually, speaking of taking too much damage, that oh, charge going to take him down. Boomerang Blade on the backside to do the damage as they move in once again. Cloud9 forced out of this. They're not going to get anything as Baron drops against them. The dragon dropping as well. And now the second buff coming in. More importantly, the fourth buff denied and Legendary living up to their names in these engagements as they now push their gold lead up to a 6k advantage 30 minutes in. And Sivir is so huge being able to rip through anybody right now on C9T's roster. And I said, I like the play from Legendary. Maybe the execution, they sh could have peeled off the bear and they could have tried to do something. They could have had somebody go over the wall and contest Yasui. They wound up losing Bishu. And because they lost their wave clear and got the shutdown, C9T thought that it was safe, but Sivir is the threat they really have to worry about. So now they're going for a dive. Diving this inhibitor tower, Solo on the front side. Dark gonna make it out, Super Mega Death Rock and not gonna find purchase. Law Pally dropping one and two. Cloud Nine not taking any more disrespect as they push in for this one. The boomerang blade on the backside. Acadian giving his life as well. The bomb not gonna be enough. Solo barely making it out with his life. 
And Cloud9, despite losing out so much there, come back with confidence, stop that inhibitor from going down, and now turn their sights as they counter push down the mid lane. It's just been like one little oversight and then another oversight by the opposing team here. There's only one Baron buff left on the side of Legendary now. And they have a composition that Vichy was coming back up mid lane and they have Baron buff. They can siege a tower, they can poke people off, they can take that tower and then the inhibitor for free and then just back away from it. But instead, they force a dive in a 4v4 situation where they're missing one of their carries and the opposing team has Lod respawning in their base. He doesn't have home guard, but it's still a very short distance to walk from the summoner's platform to your mid lane inhibitor. So that fight gets turned around completely. An over aggressive dive there. And not only that, but they've wasted that Baron buff now. They don't have that to break the inner line of inhibitor towers. They don't even have that to contest that top lane tower that's been a pesky, pesky nuisance for this legendary team. So they had the the quote-unquote win condition on the table that they needed to provide like a front line to siege down on these towers but they kind of just threw it away in that dive there Lod just sniped the red buff with super mega death rocket i just want to throw that out there just the casual super mega death rocket into the red buff picking that one up for himself and that's a minor Jinx advantage but it's one he's happy to have that's the reason they nerfed that skill dispatch and uh apparently it doesn't stop you from stealing red buff well, when it's max range, it still deals the same damage, just up close and personal where it deals less. <laughs> Although, he did get a little up close and away. personal with that red buff. Kadian gonna grab that one for himself. Yusui eager to find the engage. His team is available on the Ooh. back side. Yusui, though, out of position now. Gonna make it out of the range of that ultimate, just barely tiptoeing his way past the mines as well. Yusui overstepping his bounds. He's gonna make it out safely. Is on the top side, impactful, and Dardoch managed to pick up a turret. They're pushing in to break the inhibitor line. The members of Cloud9 are gearing up to respond. Yasui's left alone, though. May go down to this double threat. And it looks like the tower is going to drop as well. And Pakul may give his life for this. TP coming in. Lulu is on the way. The team will be there hard. Not interrupted yet. Is going to get knocked out. Lod locked down on the backside of the fight. Only able to hit Law of Pally. Akkadian doing so much damage. And Pakul is yet to be touched here. Now locked up in the middle of the whole team. And Lod going to grab that one for himself. Akkadian has to be careful here. The Polymorph coming out. Lod. Gonna lock him down, gonna grab yet another kill for himself and a triple kill going over to Jinx, but Bishu may find an opportunity yet. Lon, fancy footwork keeping him alive. An absolute bloodbath, a four for three exchange in the favor of Cloud9, but the inhibitor line lays broken. The inhibitor tower line lays broken. Now the inhibitor left exposed. Bloodbath indeed, Siva. Now, both of these teams are getting ridiculously bloodthirsty. We saw Yasui flashing in in the Dragon Pit, or the Dragon River area, to try to pick up a kill on the cat onto Bishu, pretty much. And he wound up having to just back away from that when he winds up getting caught out. But then on the top side of the map, Legendary are like, we got this top lane tower. But instead of going back, they greed for the inhibitor tower and they get themselves in basically what was a 3v4 situation because you had Yasui on the bottom side of the map, Bishu and I believe it was uh, Bishu and Akkadian were on that side as well. Akkadian uses his teleport in that engagement and they still wind up across the map. I believe it was just a three for three trade overall. So they wind up going even. They do pick themselves up a tower. The dragon's going to be up in about a minute and a half, but there's so much constant fighting going on when... Honestly, I don't think both of these teams really need to be doing it, but they're just kind of going like, they're they're going for the Gusta. They're getting really excited when only one team has a Jinx. You think that wouldn't be the case, but they get a kill, they get an objective, and then they try to push their luck for another one, and they think that they can outmaneuver the enemy team in these fights, and they just wind up bouncing off of each other constantly. Both these teams are excited indeed, Acadian. Now clearing out some vision as both teams push in. Of course, still a large advantage in the favor of Legendary. Slightly smaller now. Only about 4k, barely, a little less. They can push into this top side. This inhibitor is exposed. Baron responding in a minute. Dragon at the same point. We'll have to see if the teams want to fight for both these objectives or if they split their focus and decide to do a little bit of a 50-50 trade. Impactful, though. A lot of lifesteal in this build. Bloodthirster, Blade of the Rune King finished up for him. And this guy truly has been sort of the carry for this team. You can see him time and time again showing up when he needs to. 8-1-4 and four now is scoreline. Truly a representation of that. Yeah, not only that, but because of the way his team has composed themselves and they're all about running in and trying to get, trying to pick off weak members using the on the hunt. He's been able to itemize for double BF sword item, full damage, whereas Lot on this side, he has to worry about some of the lockdown. He has to worry about the wins. He has to worry about the Nautilus getting onto him. Has gone for the Quicksilver Sash, so that's, a, that's one less damage item on his 
his carry compared to that of Impactful. Impactful is actually at full build right now, whereas just a Quicksilver Sash from Lod. So there is an advantage in the AD carry right now, but it's really about who gets the first kill in the fight. If Jinx gets excited, that could be lights out from the side of Legendary. And we'll have to see here, this could be Dragon number four or Dragon number three. Both of these teams want it. Looks like they may try to find an engagement here. Darduk gonna try to take this one away. Hard and Darduk battling out. Darduk once again winning out the fight war, but may trade his life for it. Law Pally throwing out the Death Charge from the back time. The Mega Death Bomb on the way as well. Golo gonna get taken down. Law Pally trading his life out for that one. Beastu stepping a little bit too far forward. Super Mega Death Rocket not quite gonna finish it out, and they're actually gonna back out of that one. Both sides dropping a player. But the dragon now in the favor of legendary Dardock suffered so much early, but now looks so confident on those smites. Oh, they're gonna try to bait the Baron here. Oh, she's she, she way too far forward. Katie should be able to clear this one up. Legendary said it best, baiting out the Baron there. There's two carries left on the side of Cloud Nine, but they're split up, mostly full health. Well, you see, we pretty low actually, and they have to be careful. Constant base, they pick another one. Hard, gonna get taken down by the red buff. No, the smite, restoring health, but he will still go down. Not gonna be enough, Lod. <laughs> gonna go down as well. No, dodging the boomerang blade on the hunt, not available yet. Heal available for the speed up if he wants to go in for it, is just playing this one patiently. Teleport coming in, has to be careful. Does have spell shield available. Maokai moving in, Acadian there to back him up if necessary. Solo could be in trouble. Dardot as well, impactful, not taking any damage. Lulu will lose her life to Super Mega Death Rocket, but Solo will drop as well. Dardock making out of that one pretty healthy. Oh, man, it's just it's just so much chaos. Like I understand hard. It's like all right, they're gonna be going for the Baron. We're gonna stop them from doing that. We're gonna wind up giving up our jungler, and then they're gonna wind up having to back away. Oh wait, our carry's caught out of position now. Oh wait, we can catch their carry out of position. Oh wait, our tanks caught out of position. And all in all, the fight by Dragon Pit was like both of these teams killing one tank from each side and then giving each other the space and respect to back away. But as soon as Baron was entered into the occasion, both of the teams just kind of went flailing into the pit. But Legendary were the ones with the upper hand. They got to the Baron side first. They were waiting in the brushes. They had wards over by the enemy red buff to scout out when Muni was coming in. And then it was just a pick fiesta from their side. They get the second Baron of the game. That's the tool they need break these inhibitor towers. They've already gotten the one in the top lane, but the bottom and uh, middle one are still up and they haven't been able to crack those for about the past 10 or 15 minutes. Let's see if they can utilize this Baron buff better than the last one. And the minions themselves seem eager to continue that fiesta, as you so put it, as we saw a massive free wave on the top side, almost taking down that inhibitor, Jinx. Of course, able to stop out that push and on the bottom side as well, the turret dropping down to about one third health. Looks like they may try to find a pick onto Hard here. Hard, Hooper staying is welcome in that jungle. The Raptor is turning against him as they helped him out so much earlier. He will make it out safely. Almost another pick, and you're right, Bloodthirsty. This legendary lineup, hungry for something. They have the cannon creep. It's got the extra range. They can just sit on top of this if they want to. Yeah, I mean, they don't. They really don't have to do anything. It's on Cloud9 Tempest to make a move. They can get all three of these lanes pushing, and they can threaten to rotate towards that top lane exposed inhibitor. And even if they don't at that point, Cloud9 Tempest needs to send people up there to clear those minion waves away as, well, it wouldn't be a challenging scene game that I'm casting without a pause, of course. <laughs> so, so while this pause is going, I mean, Cloud9 obviously struggling in this game. They're down 7K, about 8K. What, I mean, what do they need to do as a team to get back in this? So Cloud9 Tempest, like I said, they have two things on their side that the side of Legendary doesn't necessarily have, and that is two late game carries that deal ridiculous amounts of late game damage. The Jinx is one, actually sold the QSS, didn't need the magic resistance to be active at this point, and instead has gone straight for the Bloodthirster. So now that's a full item Jinx with a Bloodthirster in addition to Blade of the Rain King, pretty much matching the same power that Sivir has. They also have the Azir, who even though he's died a lot in this game, still has that late game damage potential. Double needles to large rod item and the Void Staff to really start dealing ridiculous amounts of damage, but they need Need to not get poked down by Ziggs. They need to turn an engagement with on the hunt. If they're going to get dove, if they're going to get jumped on, they need to turn it around with Absolute Zero and Emperor's Divide, not try to force their own engagement. And this tower is dropping lower and lower, and you say we're seeing it now as Bishu starts to poke down these lineups as expected. Impactful, a little strain a little bit far forward there, but not gonna lose too much. That tower very close to dropping Dardoch with a minion crew of his own taking down the mid lane. 
the split of focus is paying off so pretty well so far as you see we almost drops big inferno bomb not up quite yet but bichu could be in trouble has to flash out of that one rocket on the back side not going to do too much everything legendary need to press nice edge. edge there's no home guard on yasui he had to walk all the way back to the fountain he's taken the, a long time to get back they could have threatened this in here but they do get the tower still though but i think they could have pressed that advantage a little bit harder but dardox moving towards top lane they got to be careful now they're split this would be a 5v4 not of course, no AD though, may have trouble pushing those waves, but both teams poised for the engage. There are two open inhibitors on the side of Cloud9. Dragon is up in a minute and 30 seconds, and they need to make a decision. They do not have the luxury of waiting for these objectives to drop, of waiting for an engage on the opposite side as these Baron buff minions provide so much pressure. Isui doing his best to alleviate that with Shurima's legacy, that Sun Disc turret coming up to stop the great push from those Baron buff minions. Of course, Baron buff finally falling off. Means they're going to have a little bit of a reprieve, but only for a few more minutes. Dragon on the way. Baron not too far behind. Yeah, and we'll have to see if Dragon kind of baits one of these teams out or not. I don't know if Cloud9 Tempest, like, they want to get a full 5v5 fight, but I don't know if they can go into the jungle and into the Dragon Pit if Legendary is going to be the one that's setting up Vision around the area. They really don't right now. They have Vision in the blue side jungle of Cloud9 Tempest, which as far as C9T has been able to put wars out for themselves. But if they establish control of that Dragon Pit area, I don't know if C9T are wise to take a fight against a Baron buffed up or was recently Baron buffed up until now, uh, aside from Legendary, that it is going to be able to get to jump on them like they did around Baron Pit. Both teams backing off. Jinx and Maokai still on the top side, clearing out the waves. Lod has to be careful moving into this jungle. Does spot out Dardock. Dardock taking a lot of damage here. He won't make it out of that one with his life, but they may give up Dragonfort in the process. Only 10 seconds left till this respawns. Once again, though, hard still alive and healthy. Dardock on the way down as well. These two have been going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the smite battles. Eager to get this objective. And of course, fourth dragon. It's pretty important, as you said. The minion and monster buff damage means taking Baron will be so much easier if they can secure this. And it looks like it's going to go down uncontested. Pick a fourth dragon. And now every time a dragon spawns, Cloud9 is going to have to fight. Yeah, Legendary have set themselves up for a great way to kind of push in and win the game. The Baron buff is going to be up in about two and a half minutes, maybe a little bit more or less based off the timers in the game. But that fifth dragon is going to be a point of contention. Even if they can't crack the inner workings of the base with another Baron buff, they can fall back on that one. And like I said, Side 9 Tempest will have to, have to engage on that one. But C9T, they are biding as much time as possible. Not only are they pushing the ways out right now, but they sat back and they farmed up all of all of those minions and given it away to the people that needed to really complete their item builds. Right now, if you look at Solo, one of the tankiest guys in the team, Frozen Heart has been completed. Spirit Visage is there. He's had the Righteous Glory for a while. Still needs a little bit more gold to cap off his build. He has a Negatron Cloak and he has an additional Giant Spell. And I'm assuming it might go towards something like a Randuin so he can get on the back line and really reduce the mobility from this legendary lineup. But they have to be oh so careful about where they're going to fight. I don't even know if they can really contest the Baron unless they're going to be able to do the poke over the wall from the Jinx and the Zir combo like they did the first time. Yusui just continuously getting poked out by Bishu here, and we're starting to see exactly why they banned this pick away from him. We talk about Yusui really being this late game hyper carry with his ear, similar to Lod, but Bishu, I mean, the Zig's burst damage is just through the roof right now. You can see him clear entire waves with a single combo, and uh, to almost take out all of Yusui's health bar with just a single bouncing bomb, so have to be careful about how they fight this, but if they can find a way in, there's just so much raw power on this Cloud9 lineup. They really have to be aware of where Impactful is going to be in these fights. He's picked up a double Phantom Dancer instead of going for boots in this one. So he has a 90% crit chance right now. So tanks are not going to be very tanky when they're fighting Impactful. If they catch anybody, if they dive on anybody, it has to be Impactful. They've been going for Bishu, so the AoE damage is not there, but Bishu's bombs aren't going to matter if Impactful is going to be critting for almost a thousand damage on some of the squishier targets on their team. If Impactful gets one crit off on Jinx or on Azir, it could be lights out for the C9 T roster. So they need to find a perfect engage at this point. They've been down almost 8,000 to 10,000 gold for a large majority of this game. And with Baron now spawning on the map, they have to be very careful about not walking into a bad engagement because that's the end of this game. Cadian's foot pushing on the bottom side of this map means that this legendary lineup can have to be even more careful as Cloud9 
Suddenly very confident push down and that single bouncing bomb ripping through the entire shield of Bloodthirster Shield as well as uh, a large chunk of Lod's health bar able to heal up a little bit of that pretty darn quickly. Actually a ton of life steal on both of these he carries. The Let's see if they get it on the hunt. It's been used. Let's see if we can get engaged. The Chompers cheap into the backside and maybe too little too late. It's going to use the Unbreakable Will. Dardock fighting with the rest of the team. Lod, you see you get to find a way in. Depth Charge used as well. Law Pally trying to lock him down. Sheep going down. Impactful going to take down Solo in just a second. The Rocket not enough. Dardock absolutely destroying Yasui is impactful and the rest of the team move in and this looks like GG now as surely legendary can end the game they're pushing in on the top side 60 second death timers GG being called they're pushing in we'll have to see it looks like Cloud9 gonna let them end it but beautiful team fight from legendary they wanted to prove themselves and in that engage they did questionable if at best Baron call from C9T. It looked like they weren't on the same page. Nunu went to start it and stopped his consume. Then Jinx auto attacked the Baron. Yasumi used his soldier and his E to dash out of Baron's hit because he was taking Baron damage. Because of that, there was no damage to the front line of Legendary. There was no damage on the Sivir, more importantly, and they ripped through the line. And because Azir had to use his abilities to run away, the Emperor's Divide came in after his front line had crumbled. He used it to try to survive, and it didn't work. The damage from Cloud9 Tempest, not there in that fight, and Legendary taking it to a game number 